purely an oral exercise. And you're going to say back to me, as to, to the teacher, Kyra. All right? This is kind of like, good morning, Mrs. Apple Tree. You know? Um, this is it. All right, so I'm going to say it to you. Kyra. Kyra. Good. You say back to me, Kyra. All right? So let's do it. Kyra. Good. That was good. You want to do it one more time? Kyra. Good. Now let's do the next one. This is going to be a little different. Now here's some vocab you don't have. So this is inductive. You're in another. You're in another country. You dropped in the classroom, all right, and you're hearing these words. But fortunately, there's a little translation in the middle. Now this isn't vocab you're tested on, but it's new. It's it's words, all right. So I'm going to say to you, Irene or Irene Wumi. That means peace to you all. Wumi is you all, okay? And you're going to say back to me, Irene Soy. So that's peace to you, yes, also with you singular. Okay? So let's try it. Now this is, this is you're going, what in the world are we doing? All right? This is, this is just a little bit of it. It's, it's, a, it's a, you're blessing me and I'm blessing you back. Okay? What's the problem? All right? So I'm going to say it to you. Ready? Irene woman. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's do that one more time. Irene woman. Do you know what we just said? Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> Close enough. You you probably told us. This. <laughs> Peace be to you. And well, this is, this is very ancient. So. Yes. I ride my unicorn. <laughs> I ride my unicorn. What's that? <laughs> we could be saying anything. No, I'm going to say. No. <laughs> Irene, you ever heard of an Irenic spirit? Irenic spirit. An Irenic spirit is a peaceful spirit. Ever heard the name Irene? Irene. 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 Yeah. Irene is uh, I had my, one of my favorite aunts, Aunt Irene. Well, it means a peaceful, uh, she's a peaceful woman, and um, she was anything but. But the name itself uh, means peace. You know, peaceful. That's a name for peace. Irene is the Greek form of. That's where the word Irene comes from. So you could say uh, that was an ironic day. You know, it was it was a day of peace. So sometimes you'll see that. Um, so I'm going to say now, agape human. Now, what do you think I just said? Love, love to you all. Yes. And you are going to say back to me, agape soy. So let's do that. Agape human. Agape soy. Thank you very much. It's a little soon. We're only on our second week, but I'll take it. All right, let's do the third one. Kara human. Okay, we caught you by surprise. You're going to say Chara Soy. Okay, let's try that one more time. Chara Human. Chara Soy. Good. And some of you are working on your, your um, allergies today. That's fine. Now let's start from the top. Or let's rehearse this from the top. Because we, uh, we're already in a bulletin. we got to do this Sunday morning instead of a choir number. All right? So let's rehearse this. Now if you believe that. All right. Let's start with Kairate, okay? So, Kairate. Don't leave me hanging. All right? That's like giving some giving somebody five and they don't and they don't give it back, right? Like, come on, give me. Okay. You know? All right. So don't do that to me. Let's do it. All right? Kairate. Irene human. Irene so. Agape human. Agape so. Kara human. Kara so. Thank you very much. So good. We, I think that was a nice little exercise, wasn't it? Makes you feel good inside, doesn't it? Danke. Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that for now. Good. Very good. Good. I have an early report back on the results from your homework. This is like voting night. So far, you're winning. All right. I'll look at this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Kyra Tash, she says, and all the dwarves say back, Kyra. There's one in every crowd. All right. So that'll be in your notes to help you remember this. At this point, I'd like to review with you a little bit the vocabulary. Is that all right? 
That's a good thing. Why is it a good thing? Because you're having a quiz. That's right. Are you thinking ahead? Eston. Is. Is what? Is. Is this. That's right. Eston. Is. Ain. Huh? Was. Was. Okay, let's take a vote. Who says ain is in? Was. Nobody anymore. <laughs> Who says ain is was? Was. Okay, good. Yeah. Was. Okay, now grapho. I write. I write. I write. Yeah, we're, you're learning that some of the words we, we pick up, we're not going to be learning to do this, to do that. It's It's... In Greek, it's easier just to say I and learn that form first. I write. Now, what name is this? Jesus. 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 That's right. How did you say that? Part? Jesus. It doesn't look like Jesus. <laughs> it's because it's a vowel and it's got the breath breathing. Try, yeah. say, try saying an iota and a and an eta together real fast. Yeah. 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 And it just kind of falls out on its own when you try to so say it. It's really different to come it's an unusual one. Now you've got to remember that it's trans. It's um, it's move, trying to move his name in from another language and all this sort of stuff. So it's it's different than most words you'll see. You don't see a whole lot of iota, um, etas to jam together like that. That's not one of our regular diphthongs. That's why it's not on your diphthong sheet. You know, of, of vowels jammed together. Uh, so Jesus, but it's an important one to learn because it shows up a lot in the New Testament. Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, you, you believe it. Okay. Lagos. Word. 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 Right. Right, the other thing. Yeah. So it's Lagos, not Logos? You can say Logos. Okay. Or Logos. Yeah. Just right. <clears throat> you hear it all different ways. Okay. Um, okay. And there's rules to govern that, but okay. I like to keep it keep it the standard. RK. Beginning. Good. Beginning. Arche. Remember what archaeology is? It's like, yeah, you're trying to dig down to the beginning, right? Archaeology. So. Theos. God. What's a word that derives from theos? Theology. Theology, right? Theocracy. Yes. Who said that? <coughs> and. That's in. Now they sound very similar, right? So that's that's a almost a freebie, almost. But it, if you don't learn your alphabet, you'll think that says F, and it's not a freebie then. So you only get freebies if you learn your alphabet right. Pros. Kai. And. Ian. Yeah, there's all. You notice there's all different ways to pronounce English too. So somebody's here. Which is it, and or and? You know, <laughs> and. We all just here from Jersey. Like, which is it, water or water? You know. Water. Water. <laughs> water. Okay. You can't burn it. Never mind. Water. Who This. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's a useful word, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. At this point, I'd like to give you a quiz. What? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's have a look at these Greek New Testaments while your uh, while your quizzes are being graded. By my able teaching assistant, there we have. Um, I have a slightly different version of, of the Bible, Greek Bible, as far as the um, formatting, the, the binding, and things like that. I got this one a long, long time ago, but essentially it's the same. My uh, older Greek students have these as well. <clears throat> these Bibles that you have, if you open them up to just plop them somewhere in the middle, like randomly open them, you will see several different things on the page you'll see what looks like running text with a bunch of Greek letters and you say, I, I learned those, but when you put them all together like that, my brain still turns into scrambled eggs. Um, well, that'll, that'll 
remedy itself as time goes on. But you see all that Greek text on the top, and then you see those lists on the bottom. You see that bottom column? These lists are, that, that's one of the best inventions in the history of printing Greek Bibles, I think, is to print these lists at the bottom so you're not constantly flipping back and forth to a, lex a lexicon or a dictionary to say, oh, what's that word mean? What's that word mean? What's that word mean? What's down there are words that appear less frequently in the Bible, so they're not ones you're going to learn in this class uh, necessarily. So they're ones that, you know, you say, I don't know that word, but there's a little note about it down here. So you can just go down and look, and there it is. It's taken care of. Or let's say that a word gets, um, gets put through the blender a little bit, and so it comes out with a weird ending or something. Some of those words will show up at the bottom to help explain what happened to that word, why it shows up in a weird form like that. So this keeps you, this saves you the trouble of having to go constantly turn to a Greek-English dictionary all the time. That is so time consuming. I've done that before. That's not where you want to be when you're trying to get something done or, or work through a passage. It's constantly flipping through several books at the same time. It's also better than an interlinear translation. An interlinear translation is fine, but it's kind of a crutch in a way because you have the English words and the Greek words uh, right next to each other on, on parallel lines running down the page. And it's great for, for like a learning tool if you're, if you're getting started, it gets you some inertia in the right direction. But you'll find yourself in those cases often enough reading the English more than the Greek. And so it can kind of like, it can kind of put you uh, in a place where you're not reading the Greek as much as you should. You're reading more of the English and referring to the Greek. So this is good because it forces you to look at the actual Greek words. Like, I don't want to. Well, you have to, you know? And it has all those little definitions down there. Now your version has something my version doesn't have. Uh, Panky, Martin, and Nicole, your version does have this as well. Mine doesn't have this because I bought mine too early and I haven't replaced it. And that is in the back you have a dictionary of uh, Greek words. So even the common ones, it should be there. Yeah, you have a dictionary of all these Greek words in one volume. So let's say you bring this to church with you and you're sitting there in church, or you're listening to a, a sermon on the radio, or whatever, or you're just studying on your own. There's, there's Greek words in the back, and you can look them up if you come across one that kind of stymies you, or if you hear, you know, this word means such and such. Well, that's, that's a natural study moment for you in a church setting. Okay, look, 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 look. Oh, okay, it can mean this, 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 and this, and this. It doesn't mean all at once, just like no English word means all of its meanings at once. That's just a random illustration of how Words can, like my favorite one I think is laugh, because it can mean what a dog does when it's drinking water. It can mean the thing that uh, is here, you know, it can, when you sit. It can mean um, running around a track, you know, that's a lap, two laps, three laps. You know, what does that have to do with a dog drinking with his tongue or the top of your legs when you sit down? Nothing. But they all have the same English word. In that same way, no Greek word is going to have all the meanings at once. So, you know, don't. Don't expect, oh, it means this, and this, and this, and this, and this. No, it's probably more like it means this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Okay? So anyway, that's how to use that dictionary a little bit. Now, you can automatically see that what this does is if you are trying to study a passage, you don't have to go to a Bible or a software package or something like this. You still can't, but you don't have to. Go to that, look up the Strong's number, or whatever, and then look that number up in another reference, and then remember what in the world was I talking about when I went over there and looked that up, and then remember that and come back to your Bible and try to figure out what you were originally studying, you know, and, and do all this complicated work. What you do now is you turn to the passage, and you try to figure out which word am I studying, okay? Now you might still turn to Strong's for that. But you might just look in your little, under the line, see what, what uh, words are in that passage that you don't know yet. You might just do it that way. And it'll save you a lot of trouble. Now, this is just your second week. So obviously, it's not going to be as useful as it's going to be several months down the road, right? I mean, you're looking at this, and you're going, I'm still not sure about the usefulness. If you keep at it, the more you keep at it, the more useful it gets.
So <clears throat> I've been at this 10 years now, and this is extremely useful to me. I mean, I, I use this constantly, consistently. And uh, give yourself some time, right? Keep at it. There have been years where I've been able to study less than other years. But even in those years, I thought, you know, this is a bookmark. I want to, I want to get back into this and, and work on this and things like that. You'll have times like that, seasons of your life, where, you know, you're finding yourself doing something else, you know. But if you stay at it, if you're consistent, as time goes on, you don't have to be a whiz. You can't be a whiz. That's not a disadvantage either, you know. But you don't have to be. Uh, it's consistency. And you'll, and you'll learn. Because you learn English the same way. By reading it, by talking it, hearing it, thinking about it. That's a, that's a lesson I've learned. All right, let's do this a little bit. What's the first word of John 1 1? And? What does that mean? And? Are you beating yourselves? No. It's two different words, but they mean the same thing. All right. So let's say this together. N R K. I'm going to do that one more time. N R K. That means what? In the beginning. In. And you got to supply the the because the the isn't there. Now you're going to learn that Greek does some different things with the. I want to just teach you this real quick. There is no word for a in Greek. There's no word. We call that the indefinite article in English. A. I see a van. I see a man. I see a fox. It is in a box. There is no a in Greek. There is a the in Greek. There's all kinds of the. You got plenty of the. All right, you're gonna you're gonna get all the the you need, but you're never gonna get a. Okay. Never gonna get a. So you can kind of assume for now. Just just for now, put this thought on on hold. Dog ear this thought that if you don't have a the, which there's nothing in between these two, that you could you could kind of see it as an a. Now we're going to throw a the in here because it just makes more sense when we're reading it in English. Sometimes you just do that. Sometimes you're like, this makes no sense when I read this in English. Actually, a lot of times. So you kind of polish it up, and that's what translators do. So we're going to pretend like we're translators and put the the in there. But it says in beginning. In beginning. Does anybody know the next word? Ain. Ain, yes, and that means? Was. Was, right. Now this is a the, ha. This is one of the's forms. So, yes? Why do you have it there and not in the, in behind it? In? Behind the... Like that, it's a the there too, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you have it in front of the, uh, behind the end? Oh, this, for RK? Yeah. Yeah, RK doesn't have a the. So you notice that. Yeah. They don't, they didn't want a the there. That's, that's weird. That's how that, yeah. uh, that thought's confusing. What's that? That makes it more confusing to me. <laughs> well, that's exactly why they did it. Yeah, to make yeah. you more confused. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, in fact, the emphasis is not necessarily on the beginning, but we're going to... Oh, I see. Yeah. But there's no doubt there. Yeah. Now, if nothing else, if you say that's confusing, here's, here's one of the reasons why you're learning Greek. Because in your translation, you will never see in some little note about how it's lacking the the and the article is not here, therefore the significance of this is blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You will never see that in a translation. So when you read it in Greek, you go, oh, that's interesting, mm -hmm. right? I wonder why that is. And you can dig a little deeper. You'll never see a translation that, that tells you this, right? Mm -hmm. Have you? Maybe, maybe you will, you know, but I have not seen it, okay? In RK, ain a Lagos. Let's say this together, all right? N R K A A Lagos. What did you just say? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. Yes. I see the, there's no yeah, there's an accent over the first syllable, so it should be Lagos? Yeah, right. I, I kinda know. or not. I kinda try to throw it on there, but um, you could say Logos, Lagos. Not that it matters a whole bunch, but yeah. since there's an accent there, I just remember that. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. That's fine. 
know, there's a certain amount of rhythm that you can build up with this. The accents can help you with that. Um, but but bring bring your natural rhythm to it for now, okay? That's kind of what I'd rather see. Just for week two. Alright? So let's say this together. Well, 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 just make sure we don't. We good? Okay. N R K N A Logos. Okay. What's the next word? And that's right. You said a quiz on that. This is very repetitive, right? <laughs> is that okay? All right. Kai. Ah, logos. What's the next word after this? Ain, which means was with pros. So let's say this again. N R K Ain all logos. Kai all logos. Ain pros. Anybody remember? We didn't, I didn't make you study this. If you do, it's bonus. Tom Theon. Now, don't worry about the ending of Theon for now. It changes. But you can tell kind of what this is by looking at it, right? Looks a lot like... Looks a lot like God, doesn't it? Looks like Theos with a different letter on the end. Right? Now, don't say Theos. I will quit on the spot. I promise. Oh. I will. I will get so discouraged. Oh. Yes. No. The way they have the different endings, is that kind of like how, um, depending on what we're doing in English, we add like an S or different mm -hmm. things to the end, and because they kind of have compound, like the letters make multiple sounds, that's why the ending changes. Well, well, that's more like the difference between who and whom. Okay. You know, it's like okay. why. Yeah. Why? Right. Uh, okay. But that's why. Okay. <laughs> We do that with lots of lots of different words, and you don't even notice it. But that's that's exactly what this is. Okay. So you're going to get that um, here pretty soon, a little bit of that. But yeah, that's that's theos with a different ending on it. Don't worry about that. Kai, let's say this together. Kai theos aim logos. Somebody want to say that? What that what that could be translated as in English? Or you could flip it around and say uh, the word was God. That's fine. You're gonna find a word order. How do you know when to flip it? Well, you'll you'll learn that. That'll become a natural progress in in uh, as we learn these things. Now, those that went through intermediate learned that there's a whole lot of stuff packed into like how this behaves around the uh, that equative verb in the middle. But you won't worry about that for now. You could say God was the word. The word was God. It's an equal sign, right? So two times two equals. Is it four? Oh, <laughs> I was asking for help. No. Two times two equals four. Four equals two times two, or one times four, right? Right. But you can flip those around. Four equals lots of things. Two times two equals four. Yes. So it's almost like the same thing going on. Here. All right, don't don't sweat it too much. Though. Okay, now here's our last one. What vocab word is this? Who toss? This. This. Okay. So let's say this together. All right. Who toss? Aim in pros. Okay. So last week this would have been a bunch of gibberish to you, right? Bunch of gibberish. You'd have gone. What if I, the first thing I had done when you walked into class last Friday was said, all right, guys, are you smart? Let's read this. First thing, 9 o'clock in the morning. You go, you know, are you kidding me? F, at, I give up, right? Now, this week, some of this actually makes sense to you, doesn't it? You know what that's called? Progress. Learning. Yeah. That's right. You're doing it. I have a question about yes. this verse. This is a theological aside because mm -hmm. when I have this newfound Greek ability, I want to have that with my Jehovah's Witness friends. 
Okay. And so where in this would they ever get that it could say the word was a god? I mean, is that a capital theta? Is it, does that define that it, okay. Now, I'll, I'll article, explain. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. Um, theta, by the way, you'll find that capital name, uh, capital letters don't necessarily mean anything. Okay. So we, we do it out of just normal, in your Greek Bibles, it's just normal tradition. But you'll notice that theon, that theos isn't capitalized. It's not really a name, it's a designation. Um, <clears throat> so in our Bibles, we capitalize God. But God is not a Greek word, is it? What does God mean? Where did the word God come from? Like the Vikings or something? You know? Like God is not a word that any Israelite would have recognized. Do you all worship God, Abraham? God? Who's that? You know? Right? You know, the English word God. Now you would say it to him in, in an ancient language, he'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. But we don't use the word God. We use something better, you know? Um, God, Theos, it's not a... It's, we capitalize it. They did it because theos isn't a name. We use it like a name. Um, it's a it's a designation. Okay. Notice that there's no article in front of that, right? So you can say that could be either one, a or the. So Jehovah's Witness translation would say, and a god was the word. But we noticed that up here in our K that there's no the there either, and it can you can supply the the. Now there's more going on here than meets the eye. But this was written on purpose the way it was. This was written uh, to make some points. Now we're not going to talk about that today because your Je Je Jehovah's Witness friends are going to have to wait. Don't jump in the, don't jump <laughs> no. in the phone booth and get on your Superman <laughs> costume yet, right? I'm ready. Yes, don't get on your Superman <laughs> costume yet. Ball like it. <laughs> we are going to take a break and we're going to get into verbs. Let's do something new. Are you ready to do something new? Are you tired of looking at Kai and Ken and Lagos? I mean, it's so boring. You only have 11 words. Let's learn something a little different. Let's learn a little bit about how your verbs work. Have you ever wondered about verbs? I mean, were you last night laying and lying in bed? There's all different ways you can say that, aren't there? Um, there, there, there is all different ways you can say that, aren't there? All right. Um, I have, I have an English teacher in the room, so I'm just having fun. Um, so you were, you were lying in your bed last night, saying, you know, I learned 11 words, but I don't know how these verbs work. I don't know why I just learned grapho, I write. Like, who cares about learning I write? You know, how many times are you going to see grapho in the Bible? You know, like maybe once. I'd like to see he wrote, or he writes, or things like that. I want to know how the verb works a little. And so today you woke up, and you came in here, and your dream came true, because I am going to teach you a little bit about how the verb works. <laughs> Woo! So you see how that works? Now, <laughs> Greek verbs start with what we want to call a stem. And I'm going to write this on the board so it's bigger. This will be more for your notes. So we learned the word grapho. And some of you are saying, you know, get path, get path, get path. Right? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, so we learned graph, right? Graph. And we put an O on the end. And that's why it's graph. That's why it's um, I write. You say, why? Why is that? Well, it's just this. When you put an omega on the end of a verb like this, it says, I am the one doing this. I write or I am writing. Now, in your book, I, I like how he does this, because this explains it very nicely. He has, you'll see this in your reading this week, uh, a sort of a nomenclature, a way of explaining things with three dots or a line. Now, the three dots is, is um, I am doing, and the line, it's, it's representing repeated action or uh, re repeatedly doing something. 
and the line represents continuous, like I'm doing or I, I do, I'm doing, I do. I think that's, uh, I think you got that right. But it's, it's a way of representing whether you are repeatedly doing something or continuously doing something. And when you write the word grapho, you could be saying, I am writing or I write. It doesn't matter. You can translate it either way. I am writing or I write. Either way is fine. I am continuously writing or write, writing is what I do. It's, it's, it makes no difference. It's the same for any of these Greek verbs we're going to look at today. It could talk about, <coughs> you translate it, I am doing this or I do this. Just keep that in mind. You don't need to, you don't need to, uh, you're not going to be quizzed on that right now, okay, but just something to keep in mind. So graph kind of has the basic meaning of what we're looking for here. If we take the omega off, it no longer says I write. We took the omega off, it just is hanging out there in like this Neverland soup. It means nothing, but it has the idea of write. It's like a, it's like a weird dream about writing, where nobody's really writing, and nothing is being written, but there's something about writing going on in there. It's just, it means nothing, but it has the idea of writing attached to it. So nobody's doing writing, nothing's being written, but that's the basic idea. Okay? We haven't turned it into an actual grammar word yet, because we haven't added any grammar endings or beginnings to it. It's just out there. <laughs> okay? This is a spooky thing. Yes? For, for those of us who like to nail it down, is it an infinitive? Is it, it's it's just a base. There it's are no infinitives. Just a base. Group? Yep. It's not. It's not even infinitive. Well, not, no. You'll get to. You'll get your infinitives. In, this is. I'm telling you, Pat. This is for you. This is spooky. This isn't it. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything. It's just a stem. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's. it's I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't believe it. So it's, it's this disembodied. You know. Let, let's. Let's. Do something with this, all right? This yeah. is this is too much for our English teacher. Here. We got to do something to this. We got to grammaticalize this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Along the lines of the English teacher. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is like a a spooky <laughs> non-verb, but is it even the form of a noun in this? Like it's no. the writings of Paul. This is no. not. The no. It's not a noun. It's not, not, it's not a verb. It's not not matter. Oh, yes. It's. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you will never run across anything like this in the Greek Bible. It's it's kind of like where the thought derives from. Now you can take this stem, all right? Scared. Let me. This is kind of off topic of what I wanted to talk about. You're such an inquisitive group. If you're not inquisitive, just kind of like dial your brain back for a second. <laughs> think about fall coming. All right. Time out for you people. But if you're inquisitive, what can happen is you can take this stem and make a lot of things out of it. You know. You can, you can take it and put certain endings on it and make verbs. So let's make verbs out of it. And then you can take certain endings and make it into noun. And you can take it and even make adjectives. So these stems are very multi-purpose. You can do lots of things with them. So you know, in the verbs, you can make participles, PTCPS, put the simple that's how I'm reading participles. Participles and infinitives, and you can make all sorts of things with that. You can make infinitives. Yes. See, in English, we're used to learning verbs by saying, this means to write. Right. That's an infinitive. To write. <laughs> to learn. To walk. To. You don't do that in Greek. That's just something we do in English. So that's a, that's a pattern we've learned in learning grammar in English. So. Graph, we're going to make verbs out of it today. We're going to make, we're going to make present active oh. verbs that are going on right now. These are present active indicative is what the grammatical term is for them. But they're things that are happening right now. You're doing them. I'm doing them. He's doing them. She's doing them. They're doing them. And so forth. All right? So we're going to learn how to turn a graph into... Words that we are all doing. So what's I write? Omega. Omega, I'm doing. Right. That was a, that was a vocab word, right? Mm -hmm. Grapho. So what do you think that, that that means? I do something, right? If you put omega on the end of one of our disembodied verbs, then 
it turns it into I and the one doing it. Now, uh, don't worry if you're not getting it right now. Or just, just stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Now, let's say that I want to say to one of you, you are writing. Because I see that you're doing that right now. You're writing down what I'm writing. So, I want to say, you're writing what wrap up what I write. You're writing what wrap up. I would say to you, graphics. You are right. Now don't worry about this yet. I have it all in your notes. I would say to you this. Graph. And then I put the ending on it. Recognize this? Mm -hmm. Still doesn't mean anything yet, right? Just a graph, it's like the idea of writing doesn't mean anything. You are writing. Graph. Ace. Now it means something. It means you are right. This is what we call the second person singular. We'll worry about that kind of stuff later. This will be the first person. Heard of first person account? And how do you pronounce graphe? Graphe? Graphe. Heard the S. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you're worried about this diphthong here, because <clears throat> uh, we're still learning how these things work together, graph. When you put that and it together, you can't help but say, hey, 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 right? It just happens. So, graph A. Even if you try to run them together, I mean, just try. If you don't believe me, try. It just happens, right? Okay. Now, this means I am writing, and this means you are writing, or you write. So, let me just throw a little sentence at you. A short little sentence at you. Grapho kai graphics. Can anyone translate this for me? I, I write and you write. I write and you write. No, that's not right. It's I am writing and you are writing, right? No, it can be translated either way. That's exactly right. I'm sorry. I'm picking up. Grapho kai graphics. I am writing and you are writing, or I write and you write. Okay. Does that make sense? A little bit? Starting to get somewhere with this? Now don't worry, because we are going to review this. But let's say that we want to say, she is writing. Because I do see two women in this room writing. We're just going to single out one of them and say, she is writing. Now, I, I really won't single anyone out. I don't want to be embarrassing, okay? But let's just pretend like that's what's happened. So we would say, graphic. So let's, let's write it down. Graphic. It's almost like you just took the S and knocked it off. Graphic. And this is how you would say, she is writing. She writes. He is writing. If you go to the zoo, and by some miracle you see an orangutan writing, this is how you would say, it is writing. Graphic. Did we just get called orangutan? No. You're going to hear the whole sentence. We'll play it back later. Grapho, grapho, grapho. He, she, or it is right. So now you can kind of see that what matters when you're saying who is doing the action is this little ending on it, right? For some of you, if this doesn't work, <clears throat> then it, it might be helpful to look at um, some some English examples, but real quick, I've put in your notes the full set of endings here, because there's three for the plurals. There's three for the singulars, but what about when you get people into groups? Like, if we want to say, we're sitting at this table, you know, Jay and Eric and David and myself are sitting here and we're all writing. We wouldn't say, I am writing, because whoever says that is leaving everyone else out, aren't they? Yeah, it's just rude. <laughs> so you do have to have more grammar to not be rude. So you say, we are writing. Graffle men. Graffle men. We are writing. And that's this ending right here is omen. And that works with any, any verb you might tack on at the beginning of this. These endings work with any ending. Ete, if I single out a table and say, you all are writing. I wouldn't want to say you. Now in English, we don't do you plural and you singular. Down south they do. 
<laughs> they say you and y'all. That's right. Y'all. And in Pittsburgh, no, in, yeah, yuns. In Pittsburgh is yuns, and I do here in the city. When I go to a diner, I'll hear yous. Guys. Yeah, yous guys. Right. So there are plurals, but that's just because English has a deficiency in it, and so people are trying to compensate for that with various regional ways of you know saying plural you. Back in the old days, it was ye. Read the King James Version. Ye. You know? Why didn't we get rid of that? It was so useful. Now, we're, now we have y'all and yins and yis. And, you know? That's where this come from. It's because we got rid of all y'all. There you go. So ette is that. Ette is when you all are doing something. Now this is what's interesting is when you read the New Testament, like you're reading Paul's letters and you're reading something that sounds like he's talking to like an individual. Sometimes he's giving community instruction, and that's actually an important distinction to notice when he's talking to you singular or you plural. You all do this, you know? And it starts to go, oh, that's how he wants everybody to do for one another, that kind of thing. And then finally, the last one is usi. Usi. That's kind of a weird one, isn't it? Usi. But you'll get used to that. So let's, let's, let's see what happens. Um, let's imagine here that we have an English word. Now, get out your notes, because this is going to help you. Turn in your notes to the page that has the endings on it. So I want you to work with me. Let's work together to build, let's build some uh, grammar together, okay? Let's take the English word drop. What does drop mean in English? Let it fall. Okay, so we understand the English word drop, don't we? If I have something in my hand and I let go of it, it will drop. All right, so we have an English word we're working with. Everybody's fine with this English word, I think. Now, look at your endings. And let's say that, let's pretend for a minute that Drop went to the wonderful land of, of Greek, okay? And it's visiting. We want to turn, we want to make it into a, a word that we make into, that we use Greek grammar with, okay? He's visiting and he wants to fit in with all the Greek words. Even though he's an English word, he wants to fit in. He's a tourist, he doesn't like to be a tourist. Let's make him into a Greek word and put Greek endings on him, okay? So let's say, I drop. Not I drop, the kind of thing you put in your eyes. But I am dropping something. Christian. Put an omega at the end. Put an omega at the end. So let's say dropo. Okay? Now, dropo. Dropo. I am dropping. Let's say you singular, one of you, is dropping something. How would I say that? Drop ace. That's right. I'm, I'm not even going to put the dash on this one. So he doesn't feel self-conscious, all right? <laughs> Drop it. But this is going to confuse you, isn't it? To see the P, you're going to think that's a row? No. You're so well trained? No? Okay. You can untell it. That's not Okay, so drop it. Now how would I say he, she, is dropping? Drop it? Drop it? Drop it. Okay. Now we haven't done the. Um, sorry, my phone just goes off. And off, and off, and off. All right, let's do um, let's do some plurals. Okay, these are all singulars. These are individuals. Let's do some plurals. How would we say we are dropping? Drop them. Drop them. In. Can we say that. We'll, we'll throw the emphasis in. We'll be getting a little bit. Drop them. In. Can we say that? Drop them in. Now, that's not a. Yeah. How do you pronounce that one? I'm sorry. Omen. Omen. Yeah, you don't want to close it all the way like an omega. Omen. Okay. Because that actually means something different. We'll find. Um, but omen. So just kind of like like the nut, you know? Not really. But it almost sounds like. Drop them in. We are dropping. Okay. Drop. What would be our next one? Ette, ette, yes. Drop it then. You know? So you all are dropping. And then finally, drop. We'll see. Weird sound, the other one. Don't get used to that. 
So you see that these endings here. Oops. Whoa. Let's let's do this again. Actually, let's use a different marker. That's even better. All right. Let's. You see that these endings do a lot of stuff, don't they? They take that word, that idea that's just hanging out of nowhere, and they turn it into a grammatical term that actually means something. And we could do this with the word sleep. You know, I've got examples in here in case you're just not getting it. Say, you know, maybe if I work through this with English words, that'll help make more sense. So, you know, sleep o, sleep a, sleep a, sleep a man, sleep a ted, sleep we'll see. Yes, Jay? In this case, so the drop uh -huh. would actually be the stem. That would be the stem. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's forget these English words because you know that no matter how hard this English chorus tries to fit in, he's just never going to be like a real native. You know, he's going to have to try harder. Let's actually use a Greek word because that's so much more natural. So we have our word grapho, and let's say grapho together. Let's just run down the list of this paradigm, is what you'd call it, this chart, and practice hearing the sounds coming out of our mouths when we use different grammatical terms. So let's, oh, start here. Grapho, grapheis, grapha, grapholman, graphete, Graphos. Let's do this together now as a group. Grapho, grapheis, grapha, graphoman, graphite, graphosi. Let's do it one more time and then I'll cover the first column. Okay? Grapho, grapheis, grapha, graphoman, graphite, graphosi. Now let's see what happens when I throw this up here. Does that help? Okay. <laughs> Grapho, grapheis, grapha, grapholman, graphite, graphus. You want to try that one more time? It's like in Sunday school sometimes when I was a kid they'd say deep and wide, deep and wide. In the second verse they would say hmm and hmm and hmm and hmm. And you're supposed to, I don't know. I, know. I don't remember why we did that. <laughs> Not even. Okay. So let's do this. Grapho, grapheis. Grafe, Grafelman, Grafete, Grafus. Let's move this over. Grafel, Grafes, Grafe, Grafelman, Grafete, Grafus. Now, what would it mean if I said Grafelman? Be right. What would it mean if I said Grafel? I'm right. Graphics. You. You. Okay. Graffite. Y'all. That's right. Graffite. Y'all. That's good. Now, I said you can do this with so many different verbs. We're going to kind of emphasize this fact that those endings don't just go with grapho, they don't go with those drop or sleep, you know, obviously. They go with any kind of Greek verb you might want to throw on to. So let's, let's, um, we already quizzed that. Let's take this. Lego. Now you think you know what a Lego is, right? <clears throat> Lego is actually, that's how you say, I said. Lego. So Jesus says to him, is, Yesu, and then he says, not Lego, not Leges, Lege, yes. So Jesus, Lege, and then to him. Alto. So, I said. Now, how would we, now this is going to tax you a little bit. You're going to have to make your mind work. Now, we're up on the finish line. Of today. So, you know how it is when you're running a sprint? No, we don't, do we? Um, you know how it is when you're watching people run sprints? Um, they, 
they kind of like speed up at the end when you're watching the Olympics. Okay, let's let's try to do that. Let's try to have that mindset. All right. So let's tax our minds a little bit because we see the finish line. Lego. Let's say that we are saying. How would we say? We are saying. We speak. We are speaking. Lego men. Lego men. Yes. So let's all say that together. Lego men. Let's say it again. Lego men. And it's true. Right? Think about it. Yes. So the stem is Lego. Mm -hmm. Then, then no, leg. 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 I was going to say then. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Allow me to write this out for you. Is the stem leg? Leg. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say we have a leg to stand on, and we want to say I said, right? Lego. I'm just going to spell these for you so you get a little more familiar. Lego. Leg ace. Is this a Z? That's the way I draw it. Lego, leg ace. Leg A. What does leg A mean? She, she. It says, again, if you go to the zoo, and the orangutan is. Like A, you would freak out. You might make it an action news on the Leg A, Lagos. You're pointing at the orangutan and you say, Leg A, Lagos. Yeah, he says a word, right? I mean, imagine that something happens in your life where you have to use Greek. And, and, you know, you're going to be remembering these examples I gave you, and you're going to be, why did I not pay attention to them? There's a talking orangutan, and I don't know how to tell these people. Lego men. What would that be? We are, we are said. We did that, right? We all said it together, and it was true. Lego men. Legate. And finally, Legos, they are speaking. Now obviously when you get in a different context, you're reading through the Bible, if there's two people talking to each other, back and forth, you're going to see an awful lot of this, right here, right? And he said to him, and he said to them, and, or said to him, or she said to him, he said, she said, he said, he said, he said, he said, she said, he said. You're not going to get a whole lot of... These other things. There's two people just talking to each other. Unless they're talking in unison, you know. And if they're talking in unison, then it's uh, they said, right? But in most contexts, you're going to find that it nails itself down to one particular spot and stays there. So if it's somebody giving a monologue, I say to you, and I'm speaking to you, and I say to you, and I speak. For the length of that monologue, it's going to be in first person, you know? So you're going to have a lot of first person verbs. They're going to end with omegas. That's just the way context works. If it's, if it's a he's talking to another he, then it's going to be like this. Leg A to him, and leg A to him, leg A backs to him, you know? It's just going to... So you're not going to see all of these usually in like one context. That would be weird. It doesn't work that way in English either, you know? He said to him, and then they said, and it's like, where did they come from? You know? It's like you got to have contacts for that. So that's just how this works. So Lego, we did Lego. Now you know how this, how to, when you see legate, you kind of know what that means a little bit. You can say leg. What does leg mean? It's the idea of saying, and there's an ending on it, and that ending is ete. And I remember ete is on the second column. That means it's plural, and it's you all. You know, and so you're going to have to be right there for now. It's just, I've often said it's like a decoder ring for now. And you got to like move your decoder ring around and then decode this as you go. After a while, it's not that bad because you, you remember where everything is. There's only six things to remember. Six things to remember right now. But learn these cold. And one of the good ways to do them is to go down the road or wherever you are whatever you happen to be doing, some mindless task, you know, if you work in a factory or something like that, you know, just 
say this to yourself. Lego, leg ace, leg a, leg omen, leg get there, leg we'll see. It's got a rhythm to it, doesn't it? It's almost fun to say. You could put a skip in yourself. But it, like, let's just say you're down today because the leaves, are, you see a leaf turning and you know they're going to fall off the tree. Well, say this little thing to yourself and it'll help pick you up. Leg O, leg ace, leg A, leg omen, leg get there, leg we'll see, right? And you just feel better already. And you can do it with grapho. Grapho, graph ace, graph A, graphete, graph omen, graphete, graph we'll see. So, Learn how to get a rhythm with this. That'll really help you remember if you say this out loud. One of the best ways to learn is to look at it and say it out loud. Now, if you live with very judgmental people, that can be hard, you know. But if you don't, then count yourself blessed. If you do, go outside. <laughs> go outside where they can't hear you, and and. Um, Maybe even like have a little statement prepared. I'm not crazy. I'm practicing Greek, <laughs> and they will understand. This is important. So get this down. Like oh, like ace, like a, like omen, like get that, like goosey. Oh my word! What is this? What in the world is this? Can anybody read this for me? We're sprinting to the finish line. I can cheat with the notes. No, just read the Greek word. There's no cheating for this. And it goes, well, you're cheating because you already took Greek. <laughs> the ultimate cheating. Abba Yavos Qua. Am I close? No. No? That's not Abba Yavos Qua? Anna. Anna. Genosko. Anna Genosko. Yes. No, uh, uh, it sounds like an idea. And again, I was Oh, at the end of it. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> you wonder why we don't learn infinitives? We should have that. We should have This is just standard uh, Greek grammatical form. Yeah, this is how looking for the stem. My, my problem is when I don't. You say that it's yes. stem, but we're saying it first person. Mm -hmm. that. You'll have to get used to it. I had to as well. This has been a standard way of learning Greek since like the 1600s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hate to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so when they build that time machine, <laughs> Anna Ginosko, um, Anna Ginosko. Break it up into bite sizes, right? You don't eat the whole steak in one bite. Break it up into bite sizes. And when you turn into a big man, you can Harry can eat a whole steak in one bite. You know, yeah. keep keep growing and learning. Anna Gnosko. Anna Gnosko. This means I read. Wow. That's a big word. Isn't it? <laughs> you want to hear something funny about this word? It is that it's a compound word. I might as well. You're here for little tidbits that aren't in the curriculum, right? Yes. Sure. If you weren't, you'd read a book. <clears throat> so you might as well just enjoy some of the things we do when we're in lecture. <laughs> so anagnosko is a compound word. It's made up of ana <clears throat> and gnosko. Oh, I know what it means. <laughs> yeah? Not knowing. Well, not quite, I, but not you, you, you have this right. I know. Gnosko means I know. And Anna is actually a preposition. It means cup. Now, now you might say, why? You often hear compound words. Like people, people will sometimes talk about Greek. And they'll say, this is a compound word. And, you know, I, I've heard one example. This comes from under rower. It means he's the lowest rower on the, on the Roman rowing garrison, you know, or whatever. And this compound word gets linked together, and, it, and like this whole big meaning comes out of it. And it's simply fanciful. It's, it's just more fun than it is true, as many things in life are, right? <laughs> more fun than true. Anagonosko means I read. It doesn't mean I understand up or I know up, even though when you separate the compound word, it does mean that, when you separate the compound word. So I would say to you, <laughs> this is a classic example. What about the word understand? You know, the Americans had this word, understand. 
And when they really wanted to understand something, they would go out under a tree. And they would think really hard. And as they were standing under a tree, they would begin to understand. And that's where the Americans would figure things out, by standing under things. Now, that's not true, is it? Why do we do that to the Greeks all the time? <laughs> <laughs> so, anagonosko means I read. So let's forget for now that it's a compound word, but it is useful to know this for one reason right now, and one reason only. And that is, this is another vocab word, gnosko. It means I, I know. I gno. You ever wonder where our word knowledge comes from, by the way? Let's, let's do this. You ever wonder why there's an N in knowledge? Or gno? but you don't pronounce it? Well, it's a derivative of, of this. Huh. Isn't that weird? Language does funny things if you give it enough time. Would a closer one be like Gnostic? Yes, Gnostic would be, that's, uh, that's where the word Gnostic comes from. People who say they know. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's these, this stem or this uh, this idea of gno or gnosko or gnosko or whatever. This this has an idea of knowing or understanding something. So that's just a kind of like a freebie lesson. I'm not quizzed on any of this stuff on the board yet. All right, do you understand that? Good. Okay. This is this is just freebie freebie stuff. <clears throat> so I read gno uh, and gnosko. So, anagonoskomen, what did I just say? We read. we read. How did you do that? How did you figure that out? You don't know Greek yet. You've only been here two weeks. The little chart. The little chart. That's right. <laughs> You're not smart at all. There's just a little chart. That's right. Yeah. Don't have any confidence in yourself whatsoever. No, it's because it's learnable. And if you practice at it a little bit, you find that you can learn it. And then you walk out of here and you'll say, I don't feel like I learned anything. And that's where you practice. That's where you start working on it on your own. And then you come back in here and I ask you questions and you sometimes know the answers to them. And, you, and that means you know it. You gnosko. But that's, that means I know. Gnoskete. You all know. Because you and a gnoskete. You all read, okay? All right, akuo. What are acoustics? Sound yeah, audio. like things you hear, acoustics. Well, there's no coincidence because it comes from the Greek word akouo, I hear, or the stem, akou. Mm -hmm. So, akouo means I hear. Akouete. You all hear. Now tell me that I hear. One singular. Say, say, say it conversationally. Just talk to me. Akuis. Okay. Akuis. Kai. Akuis. Also. I talk to you. You hear as well. Now sound this out. Don't look at your sheet. What does this mean? What does this sound like? Give everybody a chance to look at it. Baptizo. Mm -hmm. And this literally means to drag race. <laughs> no. I'm just saying if you're awake. It means I submerge. I baptize, in other words. Pretty much, yes. Baptism took place in this, in this way. That when you wanted to get baptized, like say you're in the temple vicinity, uh, they would have these giant walk-in submersive tanks. And you would walk down the steps on one side, and you'd get all soaking wet, and you'd walk out the other side. That's the Jewish precedent. And uh, they had these things everywhere in Israel. They dig them up all the time. It's a Hebrew word for it, mikvah. But that's where you would go to, use, to do the Greek word, the baptiz. That's where you would go, and uh, 
we would all get baptizo in. You know, we would all baptize. Now, obviously, this means I, I submerge something. So that's the person doing the action. This is active indicative. So if I, if I baptize, baptizo. If you baptize, baptizes. You are baptizing someone. Now, if we all gang up on a guy, and we baptize him, <laughs> which is what God has called us to do, right? <laughs> Baptizo men, right? Let's say it together. Let's, let's get all excited, you know? <laughs> Baptizo <laughs> men, right? That's right. No, that's not right. That's wrong. But it's funny. So. <laughs> Sozo. Sozo is an important word because um, it. Can, can you read that? I just want to make sure you can read that. So, 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 means I say. In, um, in theology class, they have all the subjects broken down by like different subjects, theology proper, bibliology, the study of the, the Bible, the book. Um, pneumatology is the study of the Holy Spirit. Well, one of those categories is called soteriology. And where this comes from is the study of salvation. Sozo, they, they put a teriology on the end. So, so teriology, it's the study of salvation, the study of how that process takes place in a theological sense. So, sozo simply means I save. It can also work for lots of other things. It doesn't mean save in a theological sense. If you save money in a bank, sozo. If somebody's drowning and you save them, sozits, you are saving. I'll talk. Sozo, sozes, alta. You're saving him. How about um? How, what did that? What, what am I saying when I say this? Sozo, hutas. Sozo hutas. I'm saving this. Yes. All right. So. Gonna watch our time. So here's just an example of how this works, you know, just to make sure that you can see this. I think plenty of examples. Plenty of examples to help out. So do, so they, so they, so do, so do, so do, see. You really got to run through these. You really have to say these and read these and, and practice with all these things. We don't have time to necessarily practice with all these, but um, I guess we could do a couple, right? Let's do this one. This gets us into a little word order so before we hit the road. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Right. Jesus saves. Right. Anybody have any questions on that? How about that? Now, this is a word order issue. Same, same, same. 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 They rang it. <laughs> Actually, this still says Jesus saves. And this gets us into something that you'll want to know, because in your examples in the book, Dobson does you the favor of mixing up the words. Greek is not like English. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. One of the ways it's not like English is that the word order doesn't have to be in any particular word, like we have in English. You know, when you and I say something, if I don't have it in the right order, then I sound like Yoda, or I, I, or somebody who just doesn't know what I'm talking about. You know, so I, I have to say things in English in a certain order. He saved him. You know, but really, I could say him saved he, and you could probably figure that one out. Now, some some words are a little different though, because him and he. We actually do things with them in English to distinguish them apart. You know, he is like the, he is the third person singular subject of a guy, and him is like the object, and we know that. So I can go him saved he, you know. But I can't say um, dog saved cat or cat saved dog. Those are two different things, right? Dog saved cat, cat saved dog. Two different things. And that's never going to happen, right? Because you recognize it. Dog is never going to save a cat. He's going to eat him, you know. But and so, but he, so, but those those flip around. Now here, 
this is still the subject of the sentence, Jesus. And this is where you're going to get in, interested in learning, how do I tell the subject from the other thing? You know, how do I know? Is there some kind of an ending I could put on it, maybe, to tell me the difference? I'm not going to tell you now. I want you to worry about this. Okay? Yeah, so, <laughs> I just want you to be all upset about this all week. But this means Jesus saves, and this means Jesus saves. Saves Jesus. He saves Jesus. What does this mean? Legum and lagum. Now you're like, I don't know what anything means anymore. I can't remember my name. Okay? Legum and laga. We say a word. Hmm? Now, you see what I did here? Lagos, I put a different ending on it. Uh-oh. Maybe that's one of those endings that tells you the difference. I'm not going to tell you what those endings are yet. But that is one of those endings that tells you the difference. I'm saying no word. <laughs> now, what is this? Log on the ligament. What do you think this is? Actually, this isn't I am saying. This is we are saying. Ligament, sorry. Ligament, log on. Yes, it means the same thing. Log on, ligament. A word we are saying. It doesn't mean a word is saying us. <laughs> so if you get tried, but it's not right. Akuete laga. Ete. Y'all speak a word. That's right. Very good. Or here. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. You said it so convincingly. I did know it was here. <laughs> Sometimes when I say yeah, I don't mean it. Um, <laughs> it's just not it. It's just kicking. You got the right idea, but the wrong no, verb. No, I knew it was here. I just you said the wrong thing. You, uh, you all are hearing a word. Log on to quit there. What do you think this means? A word you all are hearing. It doesn't mean a word is hearing you. It means you are hearing a word. Um, yes. You might have said this earlier. You might be waiting until some later point. But is there a way to tell the difference between we say words and we are saying words? I mean, I know you're doing the dots in the line. Or is it all the same in Greek? It's the same in Greek. We are saying or we say. Okay. And other languages are like that too. They're, the English is not even, it's not an easy language. So. Look at how hard it is for babies. It takes them years. So that just tells you something. Yes? I was just, when she was asking that there's no progressive tense for it's just, I mean, there are in other languages, but just there. For the present tense? No. The present progressive. It's, it's progressive or um, continuous. I mean, there's ways to tell it apart, but essentially in that, in that kernel form, that verb, that present active indicative form, is, it, just, it can mean either one. German is exactly the same. Uh, so here's, our, here's our, our homework for the week. Now, did you have any problems with, the, with reading through the grammar last week? Here's kind of how to use that grammar. Yes, Christian. Uh, the last page, the last like spread, um, I think it was like the last two pages, um, probably 10 and 11 or maybe 9 through 11. I was, my head was spinning. Kind yeah. of by the end of that, I was yeah. like, yeah. I don't know if it knows how. Yeah, you, yeah you, you build up to a point when you're reading that where you're kind of getting to the edge of your knowledge to this point, and he's introducing words and things like that. Right? So you're going, I don't think I know this word yet. Well, that's actually a good practice. That's, that's not made to give you, make you give up. You try to figure that out. And if you can't figure it out, just move to the next one. I felt like I hit a wall. Uh -huh. And then I went back later and looked at it. And started to look at it. Now, there's a CD, and, and some of you found it, and I didn't mention it. There's a CD in the back of your book. And if you want to listen to someone read some of these examples, that might help you. It kind of gives you an auditory stimulus. You need to use your senses as you are learning. So writing, listening, reading aloud. I was kind of hoping that you can have mine. Yeah, I'll that
Yeah, I'll get you. I'll give you one, Jay. So listen, and uh, now next week you are going to have another quiz, and it's even more serious. I'm kidding. I don't know how I can make it more serious. What can I do? What can I find? It's it's just the, what we talked about today. That's all it is. The verb endings and the verbs. So the verbs that we learned: baptizo, akuo, lego, grapho. Learn these verbs and know the endings. And if you can sandwich those two together, you're great. If you have a minute, look at those printouts I've given you. That's not, that's like just there to help you, okay? I hope they do help. And then the last thing is optional, but I, I recommend it. Start bringing your Greek New Testament to church or Sunday school. And look at things and try to pick out little words here and there. And if you don't pick out any words in a sentence, you say, I don't know any of the words in this sentence, that's fine. You know, at least you try. Some weeks you'll be. As, as time goes on, you'll look and you'll say, I know a word. No, I know a word there. You know? And it, the more that happens, the cooler it gets. So, now you might walk out this week and actually know, and, you know, see Lego. you would be like, ah, oh, I know that one, you know? <laughs> so, take, take it to Sunday school or church. If you're and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Now, I don't know what, le um, in just a second, I don't know what level of uh, involvement. I, I know I have my assistants um, here, Panky, Nicole, and Martin, have helped me today with grading and talking through things. But if um, if you would be interested in, in uh, helping folks that would want to talk to you about your experiences, maybe you can stay for just a second and, and kind of connect with them a little bit. They're, they're great resources to have because um, they've, they've learned it from me, and they kind of know all my pitfalls. <laughs> mm. Okay. If anybody wants an alternate alphabet sheet. Okay. Yes, the, the No worksheets. Is that your question? No worksheets. Do you want a worksheet? Okay. You can, yeah, I don't have worksheets this week. But um, this is kind of fun. Maybe I can make up some more. So. All right. If that's it, then, then we're good. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you.